I got 10 years to fill a stadium, but only two minutes to fill your cranium. Humble the poet, signing in. Please don't hate me because I'm beardoful. When I was younger, I was shy. I never spoke my mind. I rarely shared my ideas. Then I slowly developed some confidence and started speaking up more. Then I started speaking up a little too often until I was regularly getting in trouble for the things I didn't say. It got to the point where I had to sit down with myself and be like, yo bro, we get it. You're not shy no more. You're not scared to speak your mind, but tone it down. You're going too far the other way. You see this tattoo right here? It means Rahal. Rahal is a device used in six scriptures which lets you know when to pause and reflect while you're reading. The Bible has something similar called Selah. I got it to remind myself to pause and think before I speak. Does it help? Not really. I still talk a lot of shit. And so does Kanye West. And when people think about him, they think douchebag. And I get it. I disagree, but I do have my bias. I saw Kanye West for the first time back in 2002 when Talib Kweli brought him on stage. Back then, the only thing I knew about him was he was this beat maker who used to make beats and then after tattooed the name of his beat on his forearm. He would also suggest to the rappers who he gave these beats to that he should rap on the beat as well. And they left. When he played Jesus Walks to a record label, they said they wanted to take off his vocals and give it to DMX. He really had to stand up for himself a lot and pound a door to get people to listen to what what he had to say and he kept doing that until he became the success he is today and now he's in that phase where he's trying to figure out when the best time to turn it off but that's a whole other discussion the one thing that i think is extremely important that we can learn from kanye is the art of being fearless tanner christensen who is a facebook designer recently tweeted creativity is often about overcoming fear fear of making a mistake of being criticized the best creative is a bold creative there are a lot of successful artists out there but not a lot of them are still taking risks and when you think of kanye west he doesn't embody a level of boldness and fearlessness you don't see amongst a lot of artists especially the very successful ones because the thing is when you're successful you have a lot to lose so you spend a lot of time trying to protect what you have whether you're protecting your image your brand your political correctness does that fearlessness get him in a lot of trouble of course but it's also what pushes the art kanye west has always been about experimenting and pushing things together that other people may not think fit he was one of the first rappers to wear pink he put most deaf and freeway together he put justin bieber and raekwon together he put reality stars in high fashion together did every experiment he did work no but what matters was he wasn't afraid to try. People are afraid to try because they're afraid of the consequences. They're afraid of the criticism. They're afraid of not being accepted. And I'm definitely not saying Kanye West is perfect, but who is? And I'm really not defending him because it doesn't matter to me if you like him or not. I'm just doing what I've always done. Just shining a light on people and issues from a different angle so you can see it from a different perspective. Because maybe you'll see something different. We are all artists in our own right. Life is one big piece of art. And living life is an art that we're all continually training on. And the doubt and fear that exists inside of us is a huge hurdle in creating the life that we want. It's the resistance that slows us down and doesn't let us get to where we want to be. The only reason my second book isn't on the shelves right now is for that same reason, resistance. I overthink myself into paralysis and nothing gets done. What if this chapter sounds like my last chapter? What if this chapter is boring? What if they don't like the new cover? Why are you talking about a cover when the book isn't even done? Maybe I should change the font. Font? Finish the fucking book, you knucklehead. As an artist, Kanye West does a great job to show me that it's okay to just try and put it out there. And don't worry if you fail, make up for it with the next one. Plus, he ain't stepping on any puppies. He rarely criticizes other artists. He also has the balls to apologize when he's wrong. And the balls not to when he doesn't think he should. Can't call him a people pleaser. And mostly the only people he ever punks off are the media for the way they sensationalize and twist his words. Cause he understands they're using him just to get traffic on their own site. I've had that done to me. So I can completely understand how somebody 100 times more famous than me is dealing with it 100 times more. Like 50 Cent getting shot, Kanye West also almost died in a car accident. And that definitely did a lot to impact his decision. Was his VMA speech one giant ramble? Yes, it was because he winged it. He didn't write anything down. He just started from one idea, then he jumped to the next. And in the speech, he explains that. He says, worry about how you're feeling now. When you're in art, you should worry about how that art makes you feel, not what other people are going to think about it. Because we can't really control how other people are going to take it. So let's have fun creating it and just let it go when it's done. Just like life. Worry about how it feels, not just how it looks. And stop worrying about the opinions of others. We're not gonna be here forever. One more thing I wanna add to my hip hop heads. Kanye killed the supremacy of gangster rap. And he introduced this new movement of non-threatening rappers in high art. Without Kanye, there would be no place for Drake, 
J. Cole, or even Kendrick Lamar. And I'm not saying there weren't any non-gangster rappers before Kanye, I'm just saying none of them took it to the level that he did. He's not waiting for someone else to tell him he's great before he feels great. And that's definitely an important lesson we can all benefit from. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you like the things I say and the way I think, do check out my book, Unlearn. You can get yourself a copy at unlearn101.com or Amazon or Barnes & Noble or anywhere else that sells books online. If you don't like reading or you don't want to pay for shipping or you're afraid the book might burn up one day, you can order the audiobook, which is narrated in my sexy mumbly voice. And you can get that instantly at unlearn101.com. Also, I'm dropping videos regularly. The best way to make sure you don't miss a video is to click on that little bell beside the subscription button if you're on mobile. And if you're on the computer, check out for that little gear. You click on that and you will get notifications every time one of my video drops. I appreciate the time you took to watch this video. Please share it with somebody that you care about or somebody that you don't or someone who might just enjoy watching it. Much love and respect. Not everyone we lose is a loss. People can be like comfort zones. We keep some people in our lives simply because we have a lot of history. And had we met that exact same person today for the first time, we probably would have never connected.